بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد لا يلدخ المؤمن من جحر واحد مرتين A believer is never buttoned by the same hole twice So he has foresight, he has vision, he takes lesson He evolves, he becomes very spontaneous when a situation happens then he makes sure that he develops, he, he, he progresses, he changes his methodology, he adapts, he adjusts, he tweaks, and he doesn't get bitten by the same hole twice. So the people of Iman, ittaqu firasat al-mu'min, they have a vision, they can, they can prepare themselves. So on a macro level where we look at Qiyamah, the Qabr, Pul Sirat, all of those situations, he's prepared. On a micro level with regards to dunya and the challenge of dunya, whether it's people robbing him, whether it's stealing, uh, kidnapping, etc. Different situations. Yes, we took all the precautions that we needed to take and then destiny overpowered that. Then we did what we had to do. At least we did the asbab. But the bottom line is, amal wise and physical wise, we, we need to be prepared. Take a simple example, sometimes somebody wanted to do something, take out a label, they say, oh, Maf, my nails are too short. So does it happen all the time or it happened once? So you trimmed all your nails and you just kept one nail uh, trimmed, but just long enough so that if ever you were in that situation, you didn't have to use these words or simply have a Swiss card on you. Very simple, compact, small, but uh, over 20, 30 functions. Then you don't need to compromise your nails, break your nails, damage your nails, put yourself in a position where you'll harm yourself, etc. So am I advancing? Am I improving my situation? Am I uh, progressing where I, I don't uh, fall prey to the same situation? So a believer is always uh, in, in a, a momentum, he's in an in a evolution. Uh, he, is, he, is, he is in a spiral of progress. So we should never get caught. Sometimes a person thinks, okay, I'm very clever. I got sorted out. I'm, I'm comfortable. We come into a comfort zone and we're contented. But you must remember, crime is never contented. The criminals are not ever contented. They always want to be one up. So if you thought of A, B, C, D, E, F, then they ch thought of Z. So a believer is, is never contented, but is always evolving. Just a uh, incident that comes to mind, there was a salesman of a computer company who did a demo of the latest model at a certain convention. So he was posting that uh, no matter what question you ask, this is a supercomputer, it's uh, AI, uh, it's artificial intelligence, and it would come up with the correct answer. So actually, we should be AI. We should be picking up data and evolving. That's what uh, AI is all about, collating data and improvising and understanding the situation. Unfortunately, we're making computers and technology intelligent, but we're making ourselves more dumb. So anyway, everybody asked questions about maths and uh, geography and history, and it gave the answer. Somebody said, okay, let me try to trick this computer here. So he asked him, where is my father? So after a minute or so, a printout came out. Your father is working in a store in Chicago. So he laughed. He laughed loudly and he said, this is supposed to be an infallible computer. And it is wrong. It is incorrect. My father is deceased. He is departed. So the salesman now was looking bad, people were uh, overawed and uh, surprised that the answer was wrong. So the salesman had to be sharp one up. So he came up with another question. He said, perhaps you rephrase the question. The computer might have not understood it properly. So why don't you rephrase your question? So this wise uh, questioner uh, supposedly so that's, that should not be us, where we think so, we got it under control, we got them cornered. There's no way they'll, they'll breach us. So his question was, where is my mother's husband? 
where is my mother's husband? So again, after a minute or so later, the printout came out. And uh, what it read was, your mother's husband is dead. But your father is still working in a store in Chicago. Your mother's husband is dead, but your father is still working in a store in Chicago. So he thought so he was clever, but the computer made him out. The reality struck later on. So it should not be as well that uh, we are less contented, we, we rest uh, relaxed, uh, thinking that we got it under control, but that is not the reality. So there was an experiment for one of the universities just to test how people selectively gather information and how aware are they of the environment. So a person was sent with a piece of paper in his hand with the destination where he was going to and he engaged with people asking him direction to his destination. While he was doing this, two other men passed by between the two of them with a rectangular piece of board and uh, without the other person noticing, they just swapped position. Means the two people were carrying and the person asking for directions. They changed people completely. And as it board passed, he carried the conversation on. It continued. So most people, almost 99.9% .9 people had no suspicion. They had uh, no doubts. They had no awareness of the, what had uh, transpired and they could not even identify that there was a problem at all. So they were completely oblivious. They were completely... Um, it, it never even crossed their mind. So imagine you speaking to somebody and it's not the person. And uh, part of the experiment was the new person was even dressed completely different. So a new face, a new clothing as well. And uh, they asked also that uh, in during the conversation, do you think what, what about these people that just passed? Most people said, you know what, they were rude. Um, but nobody noticed that the person was changed completely. Means the average person, even outdoors, is completely oblivious and uh, void of really recognizing the situation, really identifying the change in his environment, etc. So if you see a person once, it's fine. But if you see him again, you see another car again, if, if a repetition in your environment or a normal behavior, a person is walking, what's their behavior? A person is driving, what's their behavior? So the ultimate objective of this awareness is to avoid the risk or threat. So threat is, number one, threat, there's three steps, threat avoidance, two, threat evaluation, and three, threat awareness. So threat avoidance is the flight or fight part where a person based on the situation needs to get away successfully. So in that point in time, a person must able to evaluate and know the environment. That's where threat evaluation comes, where a person sees the situation to be unsafe and he evaluates what's happening around him. Then threat awareness, so even though you've evaluated the situation, but the most important part is to be aware to escape the potential threat. So sometimes people say, you know, it just happened suddenly, they just came out of the blue, he came out from nowhere. No, he has been monitoring you, they've been surveillancing you, etc. So for a thief, for a villain, for a criminal, surprise is there main weapon in the armory. So they want you to be shocked, they want you to be stunned, they want you to be surprised. Uh, they'll come in with a bang. Uh, so when a person is forewarned, they're forearmed. 
So there's different conditions. Each person must evaluate yourself. So generally in different uh, environments, there's different codes which people use. So condition white, where a person is completely switched off, where this is most people are like that there, where they, they are looking, but they are not seen. They are uh, hearing, but they are not listening. So when, when, when the surprise happens, then most of the crimes and violences, 90% uh, plus, happen in this condition here, where people are in condition white. Then condition yellow is where we should be 100% of the time, where you have like a radar, your own scanning systems, where you have situational awareness. Then number three, condition orange where there is a change in the environment, change in the person, change in the vehicle, repetition, etc. Automatically, you, you, you switch on and you go on high alert. And that is number four, code red, where a person is on, on high awareness, high alert. And we have this radar, this alert, and this, this awareness subconsciously. Then that is a very important uh, factor. Uh, so even experts, whether it's police officers, whether it's uh, bodyguards, etc., most of them rush into a situation and they say that, you know, we didn't have time uh, to assess correctly. No, you make the time, you find the time, you, you, you prepare the, yourself for that situation. So uh, any risk that is unknown is a high risk. So... Your, your risk increases when a person is unaware of the environment, the, the attention level, the, the stimuli are not uh, motivated enough, are not uh, enhance familiarity with the surrounding, your routine, don't let it overpower you, etc. So expectation is an important ingredient. And this expectation, this preparedness uh, is, is part of Deen. Like we are told, al kaysu man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al maut an intelligent, a wise man is a person who controls himself, he knows he is accountable for akhirat and he prepares for it accordingly. So, wa amila preparation, wal ajisu a fool, a foolish person, a ahmaq, uh, is the one who follows his desires and then waits for Allah, say, you know what, Allah is afuru rahim, no, 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 no. The people of Iman are people who are prepared, prepared for Akhirat, prepared for dunya as well, with regards to Akhirat as well and preparedness. أَفَمَنْ شَرَهُ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ When Allah opens a person just for Islam, then they are under guidance of Allah. So Sahaba asked from the Nabi of Allah, uh, uh, Ya Rasulullah, أَفَمَنْ شَرَ اللَّهُ With regards to Ayah, كَيْفَ شَرَاهِ What's this? chest opening a person now Allah is opening up for Islam so Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said oh kama qal that when the nur enters the heart then it is opened wa ma alamatu thalika what's the sign of that oh Nabi of Allah al inabat ila daril khulud inclination to the year after wa tajafi an daril ghurur and to abstain from this world of deception وَالْإِسْتِعْدَادْ لِلْمَوْتِ قَبْلَ نُزُولِهِ In preparation for death. So, Deen always has encouraged us for preparation, to be prepared. أَكْثُرُهُمْ لِلْمَوْتِ ذِكْرًا Which of the believers are the most wise, the most intelligent, the most advanced? Those people who remember death and prepare for it. So preparation is very important. So when these people say, you know, you mustn't be negative. No, we say in preparation, prepare for the worst. Expect the best, hopeful from Allah in all conditions. Make dua fa'afiyat, ya yeah, Allah protect us, ya yeah, Allah protect the ummah. But preparation wise, we should be prepared for the worst. So in every situation, whether it's at home, whether it's in the vehicle, whether it's from attack, whether it's in the business, a person should have that heightened uh, awareness like for example let's take for a person that's a, a fireman so even when he's sleeping he's not sleeping he's, he's, he's on heightened alert for the siren 
And when the siren goes, he's already been briefed and prepped exactly what steps. So if there are eight men team that are men in who's the driver, who's the, the guide, who's the, the person in charge of A, B, C, D, each person's post, position, responsibility. Before that happens, what needs to be in the fire vehicle? So the details have been outlined, stipulated, and the processes are in place. So expectation is very important. Preparation is very important. Let's just take, for example, just statistics, and this will give us a guide and an understanding of, 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 of where we are and where we should be. And generally, the UK, Britain is quite supposedly safe. Um, but just statistics, and this is very old statistics, 18 million crimes recorded, 2.7 million serious offenses. So, uh, and relatively 5% increase of crime per annum. So uh, at that time when the statistics of, of uh, population was 51.4 million, 18 million estimated crimes, that's 30%, 30 per 100 population, 30%. That, this, this statistic is, is quite astounding, it's horrendous. 30% of crime means there's a 30% chance a person will fall, will be targeted in a certain avenue. Now. Again, part of our evaluation, part of our training is to see now, okay, statistics of data, which country I am in, and where am I prone to crime, where am I prone to harm me, myself, my wife, my kids, my family, my relatives, etc. So, if we look at the risks firstly between men and women, so a person is a female, she need to know what's her risks. So male deaths with regards to sharp instruments, 41%, women, 26%. Blunt instruments, men, 11, women, 14. Heat and kick in men, 20%, women, 8%. Strangulation, men, 5%, women, 26%. So now a woman, a female, listen to this, say, you know what? I need to prepare 26% strangulation, 26% sharp instruments. What prep did I need to make? Uh, I may be faced, one in three people are faced with this year. I may possibly face this situation. So what premise do I, I need to prepare for? Then with regards to the victim, to the suspect, uh, if we go on to that statistics, so if it was a male victim <clears throat> and um, the, the male victims were harmed by family 13%. Whereas female was 16%. So you are likely to be harmed by a family member, then spouse, or uh, obviously it's, it's uh, statistics, uh, spouse or lover, 8% for men, but female, uh, females, 41%. 41%. So now female here in the statistics, uh, her sensor should be heightened on the, the, the people in an environment, people that you are intimate with, there's a 41% chance they're going to harm you. Then look at the place where it happens. So whether it's indoors, outdoors. So males, outdoors is 56%. Females are 35%. At home, men, 18%. Females, 48%. So women should see that there's a 48% chance and 41% of a male, uh, a intimate male, close relative harming me. So females now, need to exhibit more precaution with regards to acquaintances. Let's look at the rape with relates to, to the victim. So a parent or family uh, where a person was a victim was 15%, uh, uh, a spouse uh, or somebody they were intimate with 15%, other acquaintances 31%. So between family, uh, spouse, and other acquaintances, you're looking at 61% of possibility of physical abuse or rape. So this is very high risk. So a person now will be cautious and very uh, aware of this here. So the people of Iman, again, identify their risks and they prepare accordingly. So we also uh, should should take this as Bab for our protection. May Allah SWT grant us tawfiq of making amal. The amal for today is that to engage in deen, to learn Quran, to learn Tajweed, to learn Hadith, to learn Fiqh, to, to learn the different Masail of deen, where
two people were mentioned to Nabi alayhi salam, one is an Abid and the other one is an Alim. So Nabi alayhi salam said that the Fadlul Alim al Abid, the virtue over an Alim, a scholar of Deen, over a worshipper, Kafadli ala adnakum, like my virtue over the lowest of you. All the creation, uh, the malaika, even an ant in a hole, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even la yusalluna ala mu'allimin nas al khair. Pray for a person who teaches righteousness to people, to an alam of deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.